In today's video, we're going to have a look at what do you do if you're writing a CMake package for your project and you have to deal with external dependencies. Let's get going. You just got to create a branch and get on with it. So in my last several videos, I've talked a lot about issues around Find Package, about using Find Package itself, about writing uh, configs for your header-only libraries or for typical single standalone libraries. So this video today is going to focus on a sub-problem of writing a good config for your project when your project requires an external dependency to be present for your project to function correctly. Uh, everything I talk about today will also apply if you're writing a module that goes out and finds an external project that has multiple dependencies that it needs. Um, I'm really hoping to make a video at some point on that, but today we're going to do it in the context of writing configs. Let's look at some code. All right, what you're going to see in the examples that I walk you through today, uh, you're going to see this macro from CMake called find dependency. And at the tail end of the intro, I said, hey, the things that I tell you today uh, apply to modules as well, find modules. And uh, just so you know that um, for various reasons, find dependency is not really great to use from find modules. It's really for installed package configs. The interesting division is that uh, if a find module is code that find package uses to say, can I go find the thing in question? Versus a config, if find package finds it, there's this implied, well, you found the thing you're looking for, you're fine. So find dependency is really taking, is debunking the, you found the config, um, and therefore you can assume success that the, all the targets here are, have, are, are usable, ready to go. Um, so this is trying to short circuit the assumption that finding the config means success. So the first example I want to look at goes all the way back a couple of videos to the header only libraries config uh, video where I, I looked through an example I wrote for a header only library called NanoRT. So what, the interesting thing I want to say here is that uh, there are multiple ways you can write a config. It's ultimately up to you to decide how your config works, how your, uh, if you're writing a module, of course, how your module works. Um, and, and here I made some decisions uh, to just state we're going to go find everything quietly. So um, the C++ plus plus 11 threads, which would be the underlying threading library, to find that quietly, to find OpenMP quietly, and then ultimately report at the end, here are the things that are available and here are the things that are not. That's one strategy. Uh, another strategy would be to make each one of these uh, sub-targets, the, the OpenMP sub-target, thread tar sub-target, to make those components. So you could say find package required components OpenMP, and then that would require that the that OpenMP must be found for for that find package to succeed. Because remember, when you find package nano RT, that's what this code is trying to report success or not. And uh, using components as a way to kind of subdivide that to say, hey, what do you actually state is required versus not? So that's what I wanted to mention here that. Even in examples I've given you, this is uh, mul this is only one of multiple very valid ways you could construct your config. So for for this next example, I want to talk through Osprey, which is uh, a project I worked on for five ish years uh, when I was at Intel. Um, I now work for Nvidia. Uh, for all any of you that care, uh, but when I used to work at Intel and used to work on Osprey, um, this config file is something I maintained for years. And it's, it does a lot, but the fundamentals of what it's doing are the same things that were talked about in previous videos, which with much smaller projects, like uh, that RK Common project for my last video. Um, so know that we're still solving the same problem, but Osprey has a lot of dependencies that it needs to function correctly. And so what I want to talk through is um, at least some of the strategies that Osprey takes to uh, make packaging easier, to make it easier to... Um, to distribute Osprey and all of its dependencies. Um, these, this isn't the only way to do it, but there are some sound principles uh, that make this a successful option uh, for this particular config. And so the, the things to know is that this config.cmake um, that is being processed, this is the, the input file that is being processed um, that where all of these variables get populated. Um, it's, it's fairly big. Osprey has a lot of options in it. Um, and so we're going to focus on uh, a subsection here, 
which is dealing with all of the dependencies of Osprey. So to back up a little bit, um, there is an option when you build Osprey to install dependencies. And all that means is Osprey depends on uh, Embry, depends on OpenVKL, it depends on uh, Open Image Genoise optionally, uh, and it depends on RK Common directly, where uh, OpenVKL at the time also depended on RK Common. So there's all these interdependencies to make Osprey work. So if you have libosprey.so and you want to use the, the rendering modules that it comes with, all of these other libraries have to be present. So there, this Osprey install dependencies um, is basically bifurcates two different ways that Osprey can be deployed. Um, if Osprey install dependencies when building Osprey is turned on, it means that the the runtime libraries, so .so is on Linux, dot, um, .dialibs on Mac, and the DLLs on Windows um, get physically installed uh, into the a CMake installer right alongside libosprey.so. And so what that does is then in the fine package config, we can detect, hey, are the shared are the the dependent um, shared libraries that Osprey depends on already in the lib directory? And so if if that's true, if because we put them there as the as uh, as I the maintainer put them there uh, because you turn this feature on, um, then we only have to refer to these library files themselves. There isn't really a target to reconstruct. Um, on the other side, uh, if they were, if this was not done, so this is off by default. So by default, um, uh, Osprey installs as if the environment, so the Embry, RK Common, OpenVKL that were found to build Osprey, are going to be there to consume Osprey. And so what this does is we get these nice calls to find dependency. Now, some of these other targets have kind of more complex macros to do some feature testing and, and things because like Embry and VKL, like export, like what ICEs they were built with and stuff for different instruction sets. So there's fancy things that those configs are exporting that get validated here with Osprey, but the easy one here is RK Common. And this... Uh, find dependency macro that CMake comes with is the central piece to this, where um, if you're doing find package Osprey, then if you find this config, we still have not settled on whether or not uh, Osprey in its entirety is is has been found, or if there's a piece of it that has that is missing, uh, that means it won't function correctly if you link in and try to use uh, the Osprey target itself, and so. Find dependency is just like find package, um, but it inherits whether or not it was required or quiet from the parent config. So if you say find package Osprey required, that makes this find dependency call to RK Common required. So that means if you require Osprey, um, it's failure to not find it, and we don't find RK Common, then that's failure to find Osprey. Um, so this would then make the, the parent find package Osprey fail. Same thing with quiet. Um, so th that's all find dependencies doing. Um, but it's really as simple as that. If you have a dependency in your project and you install a config in your CMake uh, find package config, use find dependency for the thing that you found. Um, so this would, this would mirror a find package inside your parent project. So if you find package, um, you know, open MP, find package, um, threads, find package, your other project like RK common here, um, find dependency is the equivalent thing to use when you're making your config for your downstream consumers. Okay. So hopefully that's somewhat straightforward. Um, what I'll, what I will say is, uh, remember back to the basics of target video that I had, um, re remember a config is trying to reconstruct one of these, uh, one of these targets. And so while we do have exported targets, um, that came in from, uh, these export files, look at my last video on the details of, uh, how to do that. Um, so we have this target, but the dependencies themselves are, are, are missing because when, uh, in the, in the basics of targets video, um, an imported target is one that is not then exported. 
<laughs> so let me say that again. If you if you link against an imported target, um, the target that that's being linked against when it is installed, the the imported pieces are are omitted because here in the config we want to bring back those dependencies. Meaning you could technically have Osprey built on one machine against Ember, VKL, etc. And then take that without the install dependencies feature on, so just lib Osprey um, and whatnot, put it on another machine that then um, could find dependency, open VKL and Embry, and then Osprey would function because they are present in the consuming environment. This is something like a package manager uh, a strategy it might use. But at the end of the day, what we do, uh, or what, what Osprey does, here um, is take these proper these these targets um, that got installed, they got exported. Um, it tacks on to the link libraries property the things above that just got found. So it doesn't matter if if you're using if you did Osprey install dependencies and we're using the raw library files themselves. Um, so if like lib embry.so was installed alongside lib osprey.so. Um, it doesn't matter if you did that raw file linkage or are linking to a target that was found with find dependency. Down here, we uh, th this gets tacked on to uh, the interface link libraries of the target you want to actually finally export. So that's a lot to follow. <laughs> I, I get it. It's uh, the 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 point being. Remember the goal is this config is making sure that the targets that become available after this has been found are fully usable. So when you link Osprey colon colon Osprey, all the libraries and other properties associated with it are correct. Uh, if you want to link the ISPC module directly, um, you have Osprey and all the other libraries correctly handled. So that's it for today. A little bit shorter of a video than normal, but I really hope that this provides a little bit of clarity to what do you do when you have a project that has external dependencies, you install a config, and then need to satisfy those dependencies for your users downstream. Got any questions, comments, or concerns, or even ideas for how you're doing this in your CMake project, leave a comment down below. It's fun to read them. It's fun to engage with others who want to get better at their CMake, at their programming skills, and uh, all of your, your thoughts really help me get better as well. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. And until next time, happy coding, everyone.